Hi, today I'm going to speak about how to run a regression, how to fit your time series to regression model. And we will speak about a simple regression model and uh, a multiple regression model. So let me actually show you how you should prepare your file for analysis. I have this file called Byte Regression, and this is um, the same file that we were using for other tutorials. I just uh, renamed it, doesn't matter. So the thing is, you know, for unfortunately SAS, like to run your predictions, you just have to delete the data points of the area you want to predict. So we want to predict like the last uh, column here, which is total bike rides by both members and non-members. And I'm just going to delete the observations for this part. Uh, I have the original file uh, here. This is just a copy. Uh, the original file is called uh, bike sharing, uh, sharing daily. And that file I didn't touch. You know, you never want to uh, scrub your original file. Like, don't do it, okay? So I'm going to just delete a month of data points because uh, then I will ask SAS to predict them and I need to, to have nothing here. So now I have these missing values uh, for a month of data. Uh, and this is going to be my uh, forecast horizon. And I will just save it, close it, and now I'm ready to start. So let me just open my project. It's going to be tutorial five. Just give me one second. <laughs> and let's wait, because it's asking us to wait. We have to wait, we have no choice anyways. So, okay, perfect. So right now I'm going just to run um, oh, actually, at first I'm going to create a process flow. Let me just call it um, tutorial 5. And let me also run a libname statement before like I uh, do any manipulations like on any of my data uh, data sets. So libname bsc 477, for example. And um, let me just go here and copy. This is the t uh, the folder in which I want to save my results, you know, my data files that I create and stuff like that. So I will run it and it was successfully assigned, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So now guys, I actually have to import that file that I just created. So let me just go straight away to importing it, file, import data. And I have to locate that data on my computer. And uh, it starts with downloads, which is not the best idea for my computer. So documents, it's kind of like a long way. <laughs> I have guys like a lot of stuff on my computer, so it's fine, we're almost there. And 477, tutorial, tutorial five. Perfect, so I have here this file called bike regression. And I want actually, I don't want to save it yet, but on the other hand, yeah, let me just save it, I guess, like permanently into my library that I just created, uh, by progression, I think it's a good name. So theoretical, like in theory, this is already a training data set because it's missing the validation data set portion. So the model will be fitted on the values that we have. Let me just rename columns just in case. So I don't think there would be any problems. Everything seems to be nice, yes, and um, next and finish. So the import has been done successfully. Now guys, we have to prepare our time series data for analysis, but let's also check that uh, the values that we didn't want to use in the feeding uh, missing, yes, they are. Okay, perfect. So now we have 31 data points that are missing, and these are the ones that we will be predicting after we have fitted the regression model. So now, uh, actually, usually f uh, to run a regression analysis, definitely have to uh, analyze a lot of information. You know, you have to see if there are any correlations between the explanatory variables that you're going to be using. But I already did it before, like in one of the first tutorials. I'm not going to, to repeat it right now. But the idea is if you want to analyze them, so you go here to analyze and multivariate and correlations uh, for continuous variables. And if you have, let's say, you know, something like binary or like holiday, is it a holiday or not, zero, one, or other variables like this, you go to describe and you can do like the table analysis, for example, where you can actually see, uh, you can ask for chi-square statistics, for instance. Okay, so uh, since we have time series, so we have to go to time series, prepare time series data. 
and that's what we're going to do now so let's go to this um, date is on a daily basis in our data set we discussed it before so that's why i'm not like spending too much time on it we're going to be predicting uh, the total count of rights so we're going to include this one for sure let's also include a month and if it's a holiday or not maybe it's important if it's a weekday or not and um, maybe temperature maybe humidity and i think that's fine so uh, frequencies no results we can actually store this data set we can store it permanently and since we have prepared it for analysis so let's do it so bst477 can i type it here no okay so i can just then go and find it here let me just locate the library and let me just call it bst477 oh actually i don't have to do it anymore because i'm already in the library so let me just call uh, this one bike regression and um, time series okay so perfect now i can just run it and let's see now the data is prepared we don't have any extra variables but actually, uh, let me get back to this because I forgot to include one the very important variable. It's called instant. So instant represents something like a trend in our data set. Now we'll rerun it and it will just overwrite uh, the previous information, the previous data set. So instant, you see like it changes every time by one. So it starts like from uh, the first of January 2011 and it equals to one. So the next day it equals to two, three, four, and it will finish at 731. You definitely need to have this variable because we have these missing points. And in our simple regression, we're going to use this one because we saw before that we have some trend in our data. So we assume that by using this one, when every date uh, increases by one, we're actually going to explain some variation in our uh, total member rights. So let's go straight away to the point. Let's go to our time series and regression analysis with autoregressive errors. And at first we're going to run just a simple regression. So let me go here, the variable we are going to predict, the dependent variable uh, is the total counts and the instant is our explanatory variable. So guys, like it doesn't have to be called instant. You can call it trend, you can call it M, you can call it X, you can call it uh, Mario, whatever but uh, just, I mean, Mario Brothers or something, right? So you could call it, like, you can give it any name. Uh, just to use that one if you want to include trend into your data. So uh, for the options, we have to uncheck this one, fit to regressive model, because we're not going to do anything. And um, uh, that's pretty much it. We can ask for different statistics. We're going just to focus right now on Durbin Watson. We do not need anything else. And we can ask for plots and we can stay with default we can also customize them we'll need definitely qq plots uh, we'll need the residual plots we may want to have a look at the predicted and actual values plot uh, these ones would be for the autoregressive model so we don't really need them and um, maybe the histogram of residuals so that's pretty much it um, here if you want to like save some parameter estimates or some other output you can go for it and now let's just run it you can actually, you can do it, yeah, definitely. Um, maybe like input statistics would be a good thing to include the predicted values and residuals and confidence limits. Uh, let's do that. And um, yeah, so that would be good. And the confidence interval is at 95%. So now we are ready to run. Let's run. This is our simple regression. We ran it, we have our stats, you know, like the goodness of fit. Uh, we also have our Durbin Watson statistic and we can start with here, from here. So let's have a look. Um, uh, we actually have only one regressor here and we have, uh, we still have an intercept and we have about 700 data points. So we have to go to this table that they have here um, with an intercept. And our regressor is one and we have to go for the max here because uh, like they do not have 700 so in the default assumption right the null hypothesis is that 
they are not correlated with each other, our residuals, but if our value of Durbin Watson is lower than the lowest limit, then uh, we actually have to reject our null hypothesis and we have to say that there is uh, a correlation between our residuals, which is a bad thing actually. We don't want them to be correlated. So that means actually that our model is not good. So let's see, our lower limit is here, the upper limit is here because it's like just k equals one. So these are the two first rows. Um, and our Durbin Watson um, result is 0 0.6041, and that's definitely lower than here. So we may assume that our residuals are positively correlated. And that's pretty much it. And that means that our model is not perfect. Uh, so also we can have a look at our coefficients, right? The intercept is 2148 and the coefficient for our trend is 6.7870. So every time we will have, let's say, we want to predict um, uh, 732 um, date in our data set. So we'll have to multiply it by this coefficient and add it to the intercept. And that will be our prediction for that period of time. Uh, both uh, coefficients are statistically significant, which is which means that's a good thing, right? Uh, also, we can see that the normality distribution is violated of the residuals, as well uh, as we can see it here that they are skewed, so they are not like you know uh, distributed around the mean, and um, they are not normal. And we can see like in this residual plot that we are very far from giving from being accurate. Another thing that we would like to look at would be the total R square, which is 50%. Uh, so that means that our model, if good, may explain 50% of the variation in the total rights, which is actually not a bad result for only one, uh, for only one, um, one variable that we're using as a predictor.